Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the Super Alan aircraft. We are doing all of our servos in this video. It's going to be very intense. Uh, last video, we covered all of the gluing and getting everything ready. This episode, all about servos and control surfaces. So let's dive back into this aircraft build. So we are still waiting for glue to dry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to stuff that we can do. So that's gonna be the rudders is what we're gonna focus on. Uh, rudder servos, they mount in the bottom there. Horn comes out super easy. But we actually need to set up a model first on the jetty radio and get that done. Okay, we haven't set a model up yet on the, uh, the Jetty DS24, so we'll do that. All of our control items, like all of our Jetty products, have been updated, which is good. So that is gonna be the first step, is setting up a new model in the radio, and then we will start with the rudder servos. Okay, so we've got a new model set up in the radio. We've got our Central Box 210 set up, and we are currently running off of a Rec 7 receiver. So the reason this is important is now we can start plugging in servos and getting things centered. And hey, special deal time, guys. I've talked with Boomerang Jets, and uh, they are willing to give 10% off these Super Alan kits while I'm doing the build series. So if you wanna order one of these kits, this is the time to do it. Mention that you saw the lighter side of RC build video and you'd like your discount on the Super Alan. Limited time only, just while we're building this aircraft. So if you want one, get it. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the, the, the boom here. This is the left boom. And we needed to add a little notch there in the opening for the servo to go in. Now the output shaft goes towards the back. And uh, this is kind of a nice size opening. If you like using the rubbers on your servos, it'll bring it right into the middle of the opening. We're not using the rubbers on the servos, so that's gonna bring us just to the bottom section of the opening. But it looks like it's gonna work awesome. We're also using the MKS aluminum servo arms. Uh, we're gonna put these guys on. It looks like they're the right size, so 1.25 or one inch holes. And that is what's gonna be controlling this rudder servo. So we're gonna do up two wiring harnesses. The first one is going from the elevator connection to this point right here. And then we're gonna have another go from the rudder to this point right there. All right, and Ward is really pushing me hard to use this new wire that we got. So generally we'd be using power box wire. I got this new wire to try out and uh, I'm gonna give it a try in the, uh, the Super Alan. Now this is quite a bit more uh, temperature resistant, fire resistant than the power box stuff. And uh, it does, it, it is a little bit heavier wire, but uh, what better plane to use it in than my own. So what we'll do is we'll just make up servo harnesses or, with this stuff. And uh, it's just easier to make up the harnesses at this point, knowing that we have certain connection patterns to deal with. Okay, so we've got our first rudder servo installed. Now, uh, if this is hard mounted right on the bottom, it is too close to the opening. So we have to add some washers underneath there. I just added a one single thick washer and she worked out perfect. And there is a shot of the output shaft. So this opening will also need to be adjusted a little bit as well. You can see here, we're a little off center. So we're probably gonna have to open that up and lengthen it up a little bit, which is no problem to do afterwards because you got great access. So rudder servo is done. Uh, we did our wiring harness up and the end for the elevator is run to the top of the boom. And then on this end, we've got a six pin ash lock connector, which makes plugging in a servo line and adjusting things like we have it plugged in very easy. So now we'll do an exact match to this on the other boom and that uh, is pretty quick. So we also have our covers to install here as well too. We'll open those guys up and take a look at them. Not sure how they go in yet. And then there's the little wire things that go in here too. So let's take a look at that stuff and see how it uh, all goes together. Okay, so we've got our little skid thing installed here. Very simple, just goes through the hole and there's a collar on the inside. Uh, super easy to install. And then our cover is gonna go on here and we're gonna put it in with four screws in total.
Okay, so we are going to get this rudder all set up. So the first step is obviously to install the rudder surface. So fairly straightforward, put the rudder surface on the boom and slide the pin into the rudder surface. Now you can hold the pin in if needed by putting a little bit of shoe goop, but uh, these pins fit nice and tight, so there's really not any necessity for that. Next thing we're gonna do is we need to get the servo powered up. So we are going to install our central box close to the servo, plug it in and get the servo powered up. Now, I generally don't like using lock nuts on this type of scenario, but because this hardware is so big, uh, lock nuts is, I think, good. And I'm also using Loctite to my control rod connections. So, Get it all attached, fairly straightforward, lock the lock nuts down. Now one trick for ball joints, doesn't matter if they're metal ones, plastic ones, is you can use a little bit of thin CA. You put a drop of thin CA in the ball joint, move it around. I like to spray a little bit of kicker on it, and then what happens is it just sucks up or takes up all of the slack in the ball joint system. Once the CA is cured, I go back and I can put a, one drop of uh, light machine oil in there and it works beautifully. And we gotta take a moment to appreciate days like today because the sky is blue, the sun is shining. We're not out flying because it's supposed to be windy today, but the shop door is open and we are enjoying life. Okay, with the, uh, the rudders complete here, it's time to get the booms mounted on the aircraft. So what I did was I put a little bit of black electrical tape around the wires and uh, CA'd that in place just so this doesn't fall down the booms. Um, now there is smaller channels in the woodwork in here, but I just decided to do it that way. And then there's lots of flexibility here as well. So what we're doing is we're doing our tab here first. So there's, fortunately there's lots of different structure holding this boom on, which is great. Um, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slide the boom all the way on. And then we're just going to take a drill bit and drill, uh, just make a mark on the tab is, is really what we're doing. And then we're gonna pull this out and we will move our mark just a little bit, just a hair towards the fuselage. And what that does is when you put your fixing bolt through this side and your hole is just a, a fraction of a millimeter closer to the fuselage, it sucks this all in. And then we'll put our fastening pieces top and bottom on. We do have to uh, run our wires still and everything for the, the booms, but that is how we fix the booms to the fuselage. All right, so the other fastening portion of our boom is the little tabs here, the metallic tabs. And so there's one on the top, one on the bottom. So we'll do the bottom ones first because our plane's flipped upside down. So I put Loctite on this. There's a threaded piece inside the fuselage. Threaded this down uh, until when I close or put the boom on, I could look through the hole right here and see our threads. Then did the Loctite up or the lock nut up and then now we have our little button head screws and those thread in to the receivers. There we go. So super simple to put this thing together. So one of the other really nice things I like about this, uh, the way this aircraft is laid out is that uh, the gear is on the main part of the fuselage. So if you have a small vehicle, you can pull the fuselage out of the vehicle, drop the gear without anything on the plane, booms, wings, none of that stuff, and you can put the entire plane together without even having a stand. It's awesome. I think that's such a cool idea. Okay, so we basically have our booms all figured out now. That is awesome, super simple to set up. We're gonna move on to the gear here, and I've already played around with this one and done some mock-ups and stuff, so let's chat about the gear and how we get the main gear installed in this aircraft. Okay, so there's a couple important things going on here. First is the mount 
for the gear door that mounts onto the leg. So this is movable. Okay, you can see there, we just undid the, uh, the set screw on the back. And we've got a little channel here, and that channel is a little cutout for our trunnion, okay? And that kind of gives you a rough idea of position of where this needs to go. So that trunnion is gonna sit in that little slot too far up, and now the trunnion's hitting against that part of the gear door. So that gives us a rough idea of where we wanna be installing this thing. So we'll just screw the door on first. So we're basically using two of the little uh, screws that hold this on, using Loctite, of course. And then we're going to adjust this till it's up about the trunnion, but we're not fastening this piece down until we get it inside the aircraft. Okay, so gear layout here, we are going to take a look at this. So we've got, this door is already fastened down. Now the gear just slips in here, very simple. Uh, the actual gear motor goes into the booms over here. So we've actually, right now, we've got our, our gear line. This is our power line for our gear actuation coming out where the wings are gonna join, but we will run that forward. But uh, really what we're doing is we're just kind of getting this set up in the fuselage. Now we've got quite a bit of play here but obviously there is kind of a limit, right? So um, this door kind of sits against the gear properly. We've got a little bit of play once that door is closed. And then our final step, not worried about this too much right now, is to put our cover over top of our fastening system. So, but uh, that's kind of what we're looking at. I wanna leave a little bit of a gap here between the two doors so there's no interference, anything like that. And that is, really what we are uh, what we're looking for with this system. Okay, so we've got our gear in the right position. We are going to drill our holes. So we've got nice thick gear mounts on this system. The hardware that's included is awesome. We've got nice big hex wood screws, which is great. Um, this is a nice system to be mounting the gear. I'm not a fan of blind nuts. I'd rather use something like wood screws like this. So if something was to happen, uh, you have a hard crappy landing or something, the, uh, the gear would rip out and not completely destroy your aircraft. Okay, so while we are on gears, we'll work on the front gear here. And uh, first thing we need to do is get the door set up. Now, the reason we need to get the door set up is because it's pretty tight in there and uh, there's really not a whole lot of room. So I've got everything sequenced here and I've got the door installed and adjusted. So gear is up and door will close. And door opens and gear comes down. So a little bit of more adjustment to do on the door. And pretty tight in here, I was able to get the normal screws in from this direction on the servo. The, uh, the back side there, I, I drilled holes and put um, nuts and bolts through the back side. And uh, that was pretty much the option to, uh, to do that. The stock hardware is this stuff here, and I'm sure it would actually work okay. Um, the only downside to it is our, our linkage line wasn't that straight. So this stuff is like a clevis, and then you would use um, the actual screw that goes through everything. But because the hinge points here weren't predetermined, I've got this hinge uh, set a little bit funny, so there's a little bit of an angle here on this rod, so we basically had to use uh, a set of Dubro ball joints on there. But front door is pretty much done. And what we can do now is get the gear installed in the nose and get that stuff moving along. All right, so initially I actually had this set up on the other side, but I ended up flipping it around as I was putting it together because we want to try and keep it away from the uh, gear door system. So that's why we flipped it over on that side. So steering is all set up now and we got lots of travel with the setup, which is beautiful. And uh, what we'll do now is we're going to get the whole assembly bolted into the nose. Now we will be adding a nose light to this aircraft. Um, I think that's probably what this bracket is for. I don't know, but anyways, our sky candy light is just gonna glue to that leg, but we've got good access here. I'm not gonna worry about it right now, but uh, 
we're gonna get this installed first. All right, and the easiest way to get the gear installed in here is have it retracted because what happens is there's like a little home for the wheel to sit in there and that makes it nice and centered and solid. Uh, the gear works by running it all the way forward here in the nose. Hi, Nez. Nez is gonna be helping us out. Let's just put you right there, buddy. And uh, we're ready to screw this guy in. So lots of clearance for all the, all the systems, the servo, the, uh, the linkages and all that. No issues with clearance at all. Love this setup, it's gonna be great. All right, and here's a shot of the gear doing its thing now that it's installed. Awesome, you can see there, if you were paying attention, zero clearance issues. Obviously the uh, nose door is not plugged in. Perfect, that's great. So I ran the extension for the nose servo or the steering servo, and this is long enough to come to the middle of our main equipment tray. So one of the things you could do here, if you wanted to make this a really small transportable aircraft, you, put, you could put a connector at this point and have all of your pieces on a connector. So ultimately, if you were looking to transport this as small as possible, obviously the booms come off, the nose comes off, and the plane is, is quite small. So, all right guys, so I realized this part in the video is gonna be a little bit sporadic, and that's just the way my brain works with these kind of builds. I start to get off on a tangent and thinking about other things that need to be dealt with before the things that we're actually dealing with are dealt with. So anyways, we're working on the tanks and the top Sky Candy light. So I uh, did a little bit of trimming on the fuselage to make sure our smoke tank's gonna work and it's gonna work perfectly. So that is uh, solved. We've got a good solution for that. And then we've got our top beacon here from Sky Candy. Now this is the white beacon. We've put our hole up here and the beacon gets installed from the underside. So we lose access to this once the tanks are installed. So um, we're gonna get this installed. And all we do to install that is put a little bit of shoe goop on there, stick it up there like that. We'll put a little bit of CA and then we finish it off with a, an O-ring around the perimeter and it works really well and uh, really nice lighting setup. So, all right, so Sky Candy top light, the white strobe is installed and Sky Candy underside light, the red strobe is also installed. So those are done. Uh, also doing some more gluing tonight here as well. And again, I'm in the planning stage here. So if you guys are familiar and regular viewers of the channel and you watch my aircraft builds, you know that I spend so much time just planning things out. And this is part of what's going on right now. So planning the batteries, planning the fuel tanks, and then I'll get into the equipment placing. All right, so it's time to create tank mounts. Now, the way this aircraft's designed is I'm sure you could just use Velcro because there's nice uh, Velcro slots all the way down the side. But we're gonna do things a little bit different. And part of the reason is because we're putting that smoke tank in the Carf Ultra Flash tank and we're gonna silicone that to the top once the fuel system's all installed. So I just have some old servo mounting things here. This is, uh, I can't remember the manufacturer, but um, anyways, this is a servo mount. We're gonna use that on the front of the tank. And these are two Skymaster uh, servo mounts, and these are gonna go on the back. So we're just gonna roughen up the tank, and we're gonna glue those in place with some high saw and let them cure overnight. Using this one on the front, because it's a little bit more attractive. Same thing, roughen up the tank, roughen up the mount, and we'll just get it in place like that and let it cure and sit. So obviously we're using just the flat panel here, or the, the workbench, have tape down just to protect it and keep everything level. And as long as we leave that nice and level, it will work out perfect. All right, so we've got the nose bolted on, everything's done there, just kind of playing around with battery locations, seeing uh, if there's anything good in my mind that makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. Anyways, we've got the, the nose and the gear and stuff all installed, which is great. So we're gonna move back on to the servos. We've kind of been playing around with some different items. All right, guys, the results of the tank worked out good. We haven't done anything there. I just laid the tank back in, but uh, tank looks like it worked out awesome. Our Sky Candy lights worked out awesome as well too. Now we are gonna move on back to the servos. We're gonna start with our elevator servos. And yes, we've got a bit of a boo-boo here. This is totally my fault. 
Uh, as we were putting this thing together, I dropped my elevator on the concrete floor. So not very impressed with myself, but uh, fortunately it was my plane. And um, it gives me the opportunity to use the chrome paint, which is what I'm gonna do on this, uh, the edges of this elevator. So I'm just gonna run like a strip right here like this. And we'll use that, uh, the chrome paint that we used on the MIG if you've watched that video, it's uh, pretty cool. So this stuff right here, and uh, I think it'll be a neat little look on the elevator, something different, but uh, I could just use black and cover it up, but I figured why not use the chrome? It'll be kind of, uh, kind of cool looking. So getting into the other surfaces now, we are going to be using our G10 or fiberglass plates to do all this stuff. So just looking at things here, we've got two whites and four blacks. So obviously two of the blacks are going on the elevator. Two of them will be going on the wing for the flaps. So we're gonna get these guys ready. We have the L brackets to screw on, servos to mount, pretty straightforward stuff. But I'll do one of these guys up and I'll show you what they look like. All right, if you're building one of these, I'm trying to share as much information as possible. The longest control arms we used for the rudder. Uh, the next ones down, you're gonna be using for the flaps. Next ones down, you're using for the ailerons. The shortest ones you're using for the elevators. And then when you set your plates up here, what you're doing is you're having the output shaft closest to the control surface. And the reason I know that is just because of the layout of the control rods. If we flip these all around and did them as far away as possible, none of the control rods would work. All right, so we got the elevator servos installed and a little off topic from the build because this isn't part of the build, but the chrome paint has just been finished on the horizontal stab. And uh, we'll let that set for a little bit and then we will pull off our prep. All right guys, so let's talk a little bit about our planning in the fuselage here. Oh, hey, new banner went up in the shop. I don't know if you can see that with the glare, but RC CG machine, thank you for sending the banner. And while on that topic, um, there's new pricing on the website as well too. So check it out, uh, www.rccgmachine.com. The link's down below in the video description. And uh, anyways, yeah, check it out. There's some new pricing on there. Also, if you are a veteran, uh, contact Michael and he's got some special pricing for you as well too. So sorting and organizing. So this is part of my thinking process while we go through this uh, plane build or any plane build really. So what I'm doing now is I spent some time yesterday just laying everything out and kind of getting a general idea of how and why I'm putting it the way it is. Obviously engine, only one spot. So this is kind of my, my thinking as I go through this. I kind of lay stuff out, think about it, how it's gonna get connected, like just things like so that we've got one cable here with no extensions going in between the turbine and the ECU. Our tank's gonna be here. We want easy access to our on-off valves. Uh, fillers we're gonna keep nice and simple on the, uh, the MAP tank, so just stuff like that. I like to give as much thought as possible to it. Um, initially, in some of the previous clips, I had a battery down here, but I think we can fit both batteries up on the nose tray, open this area up. Uh, which allows us access to the, to the bottom bolt there for the nose. Gonna put a connector here, so if we do wanna take the nose off, we can. Just stuff like that. I like to give this as much thought as possible and uh, have a game plan when I attack it. So those are the things that I work on kind of continually once we get to this point. Um, so I'm still working on servos and wings and everything now, but uh, also giving this regular thought. Every time I walk by the plane, I look down at it, think about it, it's always in my head now uh, going forward, and it probably will be tomorrow when we start to, to tackle that stuff. So anyways, let's get back to the wings. Okay guys, so before we can really put our servos in and close off those spots, we need to get our lights done in the wings. So we've got our tip light to do here on the tip tank, we've got our marker light on the side of the tip tank, and we have our two lights here on the leading edge. So we've got to get all those things done before we close up the servo hatches and stop our wiring from being easy to access. 
So looking at the root of the wing here, we know that all of our wires are gonna come to this location right there. It's gonna allow easy hiding of the wires when we put the wings on. So that's our final location. So all of those wires and stuff will come to this point. As far as wiring harnesses go, this is the main Sky Candy wiring harness. We've got both of our wings here. So this is one of those features that I love having this laid out like this. So everything's marked. We've got our tip tank light, our nav light, our two leading edge lights, and all of that comes to one connector on the root of the wing. So very simple. We can just hide all this stuff probably rate in this area behind those guys. So that's the, uh, that's kind of the plan I've got going forward with that. So we're gonna work on the lighting first and then move to the servos. Okay, so our Sky Candy lighting setup here, quite simple to install. What I do is I use a step drill, this guy here, and I've got it marked at the one inch mark with a Sharpie, drill a one inch hole in the end there, making sure it's nice and centered and our Sky Candy light fits in there Perfectly. Now that's exactly how I want it to sit. I want to be able to glue that in place with the light just sitting out like that. So that is awesome. And uh, we'll have to do a little extension on here to reach the, uh, the root of the tip tank. And then our nav light here, so this is the left wing, so we're installing a red nav light. That just needs a little hole on the outside edge there. All right, so we've got the tip tank done here as far as the lights go, still need to put the lens on, but quite straightforward, just use medium CA to mount everything. So uh, one of the important things is making sure your, uh, your leading light here is nice and level in all directions. And then our light here, we've put the, uh, the lens that Sky Candy included over top and just use CA to glue that in place. So it did add an extension here for the, the front light and uh, we're gonna leave these fairly long, like probably, well, we'll leave them the same length as the extension and uh, all that can tuck inside here. And uh, then if we ever wanna switch the wing tips out, it's, it's pretty easy to do it, so. All right, so I'm just shortening up these connectors and this is uh, something where you've got a couple options. We could just put a new uh, servo connector on the end, but kind of in the conservation mode of not using things when I don't have to. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm just shortening this wire and this brings up a great opportunity to talk about today's video sponsor. All right, and today's video has been sponsored by Solder Stick. Uh, if you're a fan of the channel, you've seen these things. I did test videos, torture test videos on these things, and I was very, very skeptical the first time that I ever tried these things, but tell you what, they pass with flying colors, and I have learned to absolutely enjoy using these products. Huge time saver, and uh, I love this kit. It's a 500 piece kit, comes with all the different sizes, multiple connectors, and it is absolutely, absolutely lovely. So solder sticks, I love them because they save a lot of time. I use a lighter mostly to put them together, and uh, best of all, we've got a discount code for you guys so solder stick has graciously allowed us to provide you with a discount code that discount code is RC20 and that code gets you 20% off your orders at solder stick so all the information is down below in the video description also the first comment of the video check it out guys I love solder stick I know there's tons of fans of the channel that have ordered these things and are using them and they are awesome so check them out and save yourself some time. All right, so we've got our connectors done here for the tip tank. Also cut our lens and uh, installed our light and everything. So that's just curing. We still have to do the other one, but this one was our, uh, our setup one. And I'm just working on the leading edge lights here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to glue in this uh, 1 8 inch ply piece. And that's just gonna add a little bit more reinforcement um, this fiberglass, although it's, it's decent, uh, it's not quite as thick as I want it to be, so that's why I'm gonna put this piece of wood in there. We're gonna paint this all nice and nice, probably black, I think, and uh, we'll see. But uh, we're gonna uh, aero epoxy that in place and uh, let those cure. So we'll do both wings right now. All right, so we took the prep off this morning and our tip tank light looks awesome and uh, our reinforcement plate is good as well. Now the dimensions here is four inches, almost, across the span. So what I did was mark it out at the center point. So we've got a mark at two inches, 
and then we've got that split as well too. And the reason for that is that gives us enough spacing between each light, but also enough spacing to actually use our drill bit because I don't have another drill bit that would do a one inch hole. Uh, the included lenses are absolutely awesome. The markings on them is great. So these are all cut out and ready to go. And uh, obviously we got to get it the right way. And there's a rough picture for you there of how it fits. Looks really nice. Okay guys, so we've got our two wiring harnesses done up here. Pretty straightforward. We've got a flap, a aileron line, and the longest one is our lighting line up. And uh, we've got everything marked at the connector here, which goes to the root of the wing. So what we're doing is we're installing the lighting harness and everything, and we're just feeding it from the wing tank uh, connection or the wing tip connection here back. And the reason for that is we need to get our wiring harness sitting in here and then feed the other two connections to this point for our leading edge light. Okay, so when I'm mounting the lights like this, what I'll do is a couple things. First of all, um, front to back, top to bottom, sorry. I will put two drops of medium CA and use the ruler and get this set up so it's roughly level with the wing. Um, that's kind of what you're looking at this way, right? And uh, then what I do is to make sure the lights are all the same, you want to take something like this square here and run it across all of the two lights. So now these lights are perfectly paired up together and they'll shine exactly the same. All right, so we got both wings all good to go as far as the lighting is concerned. Now it's time to work on the servos. Nothing out of the ordinary there. We're just repeating the exact same process as we did on the other surfaces. All right, so flaps. It's nice to get these set up equally outside the aircraft. You have more control, especially in a situation like this where it's all external and the linkages are fairly straightforward. So we've got both flaps set up equally and pretty simple, straightforward. All right, so we got one of the wings done, of course, using the stock hardware. It's nice, like it, it's big and stout and beefy. Uh, on the flaps, we're using the one and a half inch servo arm, and that gives us uh, awesome flap travel here. We're probably 80 degrees is what we can get. Um, almost almost straight 90 degree flaps. Uh, the ailerons, I went with the one inch hole and the one inch hole, we still have our dual rates set to 60% and that 60% gets us inch and one eighth travel, which is what we're looking for. So um, just keep that in mind. If you're building one of these, you can do the, a one inch horn. All right, so we've got both wings attached here and both wings are basically done other than uh, probably going to end up painting around the, uh, the light lenses. Um, it just helps to hide all the ugliness. So we'll tape those off, paint them. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to probably give that some thought, maybe chrome, maybe white. Hi Nez. Tell you what, my wife leaves for the weekend to go to a volleyball tournament because she's a coach and this thing won't stop leaving me alone. Oh my gosh. And no, I didn't put her up there. I was standing there filming and she jumped on my shoulder. All right, so I drilled the holes for the wing fixing bolts. Now, one thing I like to do in this scenario is pick a drill bit that is smaller than the bolt size. So here's a, some reference there. Now it's not much, it's just a little bit. But what this does is this misses all the threads, goes down and drills a hole into the fiberglass tabby that I like to call them. And uh, then what I do is I pull the wing out or the surface and then I use that same drill bit and I go towards, I, I basically stick it in the hole and push towards the suck in direction. So in this case, the wing, we want to pull the wing towards the fuselage. So I put it in the hole and start moving or making the hole bigger in that direction. What that does is it helps to make that fixing bolt nice and tight. If you just oversize the hole, it's not going to pull the surface in tight and you, there's a good chance you'll have a bigger gap or your surface is going to be loose. So that's how I do these, uh, these surfaces and it works very well. Okay, and the last thing we're going to talk about here, or I'll show you, is what I forgot to do on these little uh, boom skids. Uh, as I'm going through all the hardware, 
I basically discovered that we've got two more of these little wheel chalk things and it would make sense to have one on the outside so this can't move in and out. Cause right now with only one on the inside, it can move in and out and then eventually this angle is gonna damage the boom. So that's what the, the four of these is for. So I'm just gonna pull the, uh, the rudder servo cover out. We'll undo the, uh, the Allen key from the inside and then we will be able to put this on and then get it reinstalled. All right guys, and that's gonna wrap up everything for episode number two of the Boomerang Super Alan build series. Uh, we got a lot done in this episode. All the servos are installed, gears installed, very productive. So next episode, we are going to start focusing on the equipment installation and the finer details of this aircraft. We've got to organize all of our equipment. We've got to install the turbine, the smoke system. We've got to do some painting on the light lenses. So it's going to be a great episode. If you happen to be a regular watcher of the channel and you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below. And if you haven't seen the other videos of the Super Alan, at the end of this video, a uh, video will pop up and you can click on that and watch the unboxing of this beautiful aircraft as well. So thanks guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.